Hello. I have five kids. And what that means is I spend an awful lot of time telling a lot of people stuff that they don't want to hear. Eat your vegetables, put your phone down, go exercise. Cybersecurity is kind of like that. And so I am very appreciative of the fact that you are watching this video. Uh, my name is Tim Tang. And at Hughes, my role is to look at relevant market trends, to look at areas where the market is evolving and changing and try to understand what can be done to kind of prepare and better anticipate the changes that are needed to expand and maximize the business opportunity of these changes. And today, my hope is to provide a, a different perspective on uh, cybersecurity and the MNSP programs. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a question that I'd like to ask you. When it comes to your roof, how long do you wait until you replace it? What is your thinking and thought process as you think about your own roof? You know, a typical asphalt single roof is good for 20 years. Do you wait till year 19, perhaps 20, and then make the change and go ahead and swap it out before it becomes a problem? Or do you wait till 20, 21, 22? Do you push the edge of the envelope and try to maximize and get every little bit of value that you have of this resource? Do you go even maybe 23, 25 years and see if you can get it like an extra chunk of time? Do you wait until it becomes a problem? Do you wait till it's only a problem when it becomes a problem and hope that the problem's just not too bad, that it's not a big storm that takes you from, you know, a, a functional roof to suddenly a deluge inside of your bedroom? You know, when we think about cybersecurity, we want to think about it in that kind of context. Is it really appropriate to wait until it becomes a problem before we deal with the problem? I have another question for you. When it comes to your firewall, I want you to think about the firewall that you have in place that's protecting your business. How old is it? I mean, is it a few years old? Is it five years old, 10 years old? You know, the thing about firewall technologies is that it's very, very sensitive to the amount of CPU process. It's only as really good as the amount of data that it can process, that it can analyze and, and look and, and understand kind of what are, where the problems, uh, where the threats are in your network. And, and if your firewall is three years, five years, 10 years old, it's kind of like using an iPhone generation one today. It doesn't match. It, the capability of that old component, that legacy component, does not match the threat context of what today's world looks like. It's time to get rid of that thing. And it's time to make sure that what you have protecting your business matches the threats to your business. Let's talk for a moment about the uh, outdoor EMV liability shift and the MNSP program that's coming out. For many of the leading point of sale providers in the C-Store industries, they've introduced an MNSP program, a managed network service provider program. And this is kind of one of the foundation requirements in order to prepare the C-Store to support a lot of the newer technologies for the outdoor EMV, to be able to take chip transactions in the forecourt. What is the MS MNSP? You know, when you think about it, at the end of the day, this is a program where not only are we trying to prepare the store for the future requirements of outdoor EMV, taking chip transactions in the forecourt, we're also trying to provide an environment, a safe environment for the POS providers, the help desk centers, to be able to reach in and basically access the point of sale when there's problems. So think about what we are talking about here. We are, most C-Store operators, many C-Store operators don't have a dedicated IT staff. And so they rely on the point of sale vendors to provide all the support that they need. And when they have credit card problems, transactions are not working, it's called 1-800-POS-HELP-DESK. Uh, and please come in and help. Think about what happens in that moment though. When you call for help, it's a third party help desk reaching in from the internet into the store environment to access the point of sale, the most sensitive part of your business, from the most dangerous part, the open internet of the world. What is that like? I was been struggling to come up with an adequate example until I, I thought about Amazon, you know, a few years ago. 
they, they came up with this Amazon key, right? The whole idea was let's let delivery people access and open your front door. So the idea is instead of leaving packages out in the front so that people could actually come and steal it, let's give the delivery guy the ability to open your front door so that they can put the package in. I think this is a tremendous example, a very good example of what the MNSP program is about. This is not just somebody coming in to put a package in your office. This is somebody coming into your opening the front door, walking the package, going upstairs to your bedroom and putting it in the closet. I mean, the point of sale is the most sensitive part of your business. And yet we have you know, a third party reaching in. And so my question then when we think about that is, what kind of protections do you want in place to ensure that this kind of access, which is quite necessary, again, many operators don't have a dedicated IT staff. There is no ability for them to fix their own point of sale issues. They, they need the help. So this, we can't get away with just saying, I'm not letting anybody in the front door. We need to open up the network, but we need to do it in a way that is safe and secure. And that's essentially what the MNSP, Managed Network Service Program, is all about. It's about creating a platform so that a, a valid, a credible third party can reach into the most sensitive part of your business and provide you the crucial support that you need. Now, the question to think about that then from a cybersecurity perspective is, what's at risk? And maybe we broaden the, the question of, what's at risk in general from a cybersecurity perspective? I'd like for you to think about this number, 27.7. 27.7% chance that you will suffer a data breach. This is an amazing number when you think about how likely it is to happen. So if I take that 27.7% chance and I multiply it by the average cost of a data breach, $3.1 million, what kind of exposure do you have to your business? Or if I take that 27.7% chance and I multiply it by $264,117, the average cost of a phishing breach. What would that do to your business? Now, it's not all bad news. If you were to employ security automation, if you were to employ some kind of incident response, those kind of capabilities can actually save you in the event that that 27.7% becomes a reality, reality, those kind of techniques can actually save you dramatically on the cost of a potential breach. This is, this is where it's important to make good business decisions based on a technology, a technology need. So then as we think about cybersecurity, I think the, one of the big questions that you wanna ask yourself, given the seriousness of the liability given the sensitivity of somebody coming into the most sensitive part of your business, what's good enough? Who says what's good enough? How do you trust that the providers that you're working with are good enough? Do you take them at your word, at their word? So many of the solutions that are on the marketplace today are actually homegrown. They're developed by the, by the service provider themselves using open source software. So is that good enough? Says who? And one of the first recommendations I have when it comes to cybersecurity is validate the solutions that you are depending your business on. This is not a non-trivial step of trust, step of faith. And you want to make sure that the partners that you're working with have been fully vetted, that they're not just bringing some homegrown solution based on some open source software, but they're bringing adequate protection, adequate technology, vetted, proven solutions to protect your network and protect your business. Some other design guides that I would suggest to you is as you think about the MNSP, there's kind of two approaches that you can use. You can use an MNSP program to just protect the point of sale. System. And many, for many uh, providers or for many operators, that's the choice that they've got. They've got one network for their point of sale and they've got another network for their back office. And they do this because the point of sale has to be protected, but they need access to the back office. Well, the dilemma and the difficulty here is as you think about that, you don't, uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like this safe, right? You, you've secured the point of sale, the secure part of the business, but you left the back office PC exposed. This does not compute. Secure the whole thing. If we're gonna invest in an MNSP program, 
you want to protect the whole store, not just the point of sale, because if you lose your back office PC, you lose your ability to manage your inventory, manage your employee schedules, and all the other records that uh, basically uh, a ransomware attacker is going to ask you to pay fifteen, twenty, fifty thousand dollars uh, to get your data back. It doesn't make sense to protect the point of sale and leave the back office exposed. And so as you think about an MNSP, think about consolidating your network and think about protecting, you know, business class internet services from a lot of uh, that are out there only really speak to the bandwidth capacity. They don't really say very much about the cybersecurity posture. It's, you know, these business internet solutions are just about, I'll give you more capacity to, to hopefully have a better experience for your applications. They're not doing the managed firewall. They're not doing the daily log analysis. They're not providing IDS, intrusion detection services or intrusion prevention services. There's, there's no safety in that. And so a business internet connection into your back office is, is something to be concerned about. When you think about the MNSP, consolidate your network, protect both the point of sale and the back office. I got another question for you. Take a look at this. Is this enough? You know, the, the first few times that I saw this, I am not a robot. You can't help but laugh and say, really? This is going to protect me? I mean, I think I could get a high school kid to basically write a little bit of code and just check that box anytime I'd want. It's like, why would anybody think that this would actually work? It's remarkable when you think about, though, what happens behind that little clicking. Have you ever considered that, you know, when you're moving to click to that box that Google's actually watching the speed at which your mouse might be moving uh, to click that box that when you click that box to say I am not a robot Google's looking at perhaps where your IP address is coming from and where you've been and to see what do they know about you when it comes to cybersecurity sometimes the most elegant solutions are really quite simple the flip side of that is sometimes uh, some of the most elegant threats appear to be simple and are actually far more sophisticated than appearances would lead them to be and so don't be deceived when we, we when we think about this world where there is an enormous motivation to break into your business an enormous reward i mean it's become a business it's it's, it's shocking ransomware is a business Non-technical people can outsource their technical requirements for ransomware for the viruses and then go in the open market and actually issue and basically issue their attacks using other people's software and just paying them off with some portion of whatever ransoms they collect. They've got a help desk, a 1-800 number that you can call to get help so that it makes it a little bit easier for you to pay your ransom when you're breached. It's become a growing business and it's, it's worthy of additional attention. Now, one of the challenges of cybersecurity is the immense amount of data that's involved. Now, because an adequate protection is, it's like anything else in the, in the retail business. There's just simply too much data to look at. And it becomes quite overwhelming very quickly. To do cybersecurity well, you want to be collecting all the data from all the access, from all the various points in your, in your network, from the firewalls, from the switches, from the, the, from the knock, from the store. And what you end up with is this massive wave of, of, of data that just is just completely overwhelming. And so it's understandable so that, as to why people would say that, listen, this is just too much of a problem that I have really no chance of actually dealing with. And my encouragement to you is to say, yes, it actually is a very big problem. It is actually quite challenging to deal with this magnitude of problem with the limited resources that you have available in front of you. When we look at the cybersecurity, I see this as a problem of the gap. You know, it's it's a question of where we are today with a lot of outdated firewalls in a very reactive mode, waiting for the next attack before we become aware of that, of that we even have a problem. And in many cases, the solutions that we are in, we have in place today are non-compliant with PCI DSS standards. And, and where we need to be is for more modernized uh, solutions with technology that is adequate to the protection that is required, that is mandated by the needs of the business. We wanna be proactive. We wanna be looking at what's happening in our network and understanding when somebody's trying to log in 25 times to try to crack our passwords. We wanna be aware of when we detect those kinds of issues. And we certainly want the protection that comes from being compliant. 
if you are PCI compliant and you are breached, you are not going to, you have safe harbor. You are not going to be held responsible for the financial losses. But if you are not PCI compliant and you are breached, all of those losses, all of those financial liabilities are going to be yours and yours alone. And so there's meaningful value as we think about cybersecurity, think about the, the risks to our business and what needs to be done in order to protect the integrity of our business. I'd like to leave you as we kind of wrap this up and thinking about this idea of do care. And I'd like to introduce you to the case of T.G. Hooper. This is an old 1930s legal case that set the standard for what negligence is. It was a, it's a really shocking story. I encourage you to go look it up and it's very fascinating to read. It's about a tugboat operator who basically got caught in a storm and, and uh, uh, there was a huge barge of coal or whatever. And, and the, the tugboat was the, sued by the, uh, their customer for losing uh, massive amounts of, uh, uh, for the losses of, of the ships that were lost. And the argument was basically saying, this tugboat operator did not have radio technologies that would have told them that, hey, there's bad weather coming, you should actually uh, you stay, stay home and not uh, go out to sea. And the operator's defense was, hey, radio technology is new stuff. This is not the norm. It's not my fault that I don't have radios on my tugboats. And what was intriguing, and the reason why this case is always cited in cybersecurity matters, in many cybersecurity cases, is that the judge found that said, hey, you are responsible. The technology was available for you to avoid this accident. And because you did not use the technology that was available for you to afford, uh, avoid this accident, you're responsible for those losses. And when it comes to cybersecurity, that case is actually pointed to and saying, hey, there are solutions available for you to protect yourself. And if you don't use those solutions, possibly you may be held responsible for what happens for the losses that are incurred because of your failure to use, to meet the standards of due care. You will be deemed negligent. So what does due care look like or how do we even think about that? One place that I would encourage you to start thinking about is PCI compliance. Think through PCI, it's, this is old news. This has been out there for five years. And the reason why it's so serious is because, because it's old news, these policies are enforced now. We are not waiting until April 2021 for the outdoor EMV liability shift to deal with these issues. If you're found not compliant today and have a breach tomorrow, the losses are gonna be your responsibility. And so my strong, strong encouragement is to go look and review your, your PCI posture. This is a great place. This is not you know, the, the end all and be all of security, but this is an excellent starting point to make sure that you're, you've got at least a reasonable position in terms of defenses, that you've got at least a template uh, for protecting your business from the, the attackers that are out there. But PCI is not enough. Security is, is a starting point. Then my encouragement to you is to keep an eye out for where uh, cybersecurity is evolving. It's, you know, it continues to change. We are moving from an era of whitelist, blacklist policies, to unified threat management. Now we're getting into an area where artificial intelligence and machine learning are becoming a very natural part of the process. Again, think about that huge wave of, of data that's coming out. What's the best way to deal with that huge wave of data? Use machine learning, look for the trends, look for the processes. And so this is where we start thinking about uh, SIM services, security information and event management services, or MDR services, manage detection response. And the whole idea is to apply AI, machine learning, to basically automatically munch through all this, this massive tidal wave of data and identify that attacker who's logged in 15 times trying to break your password and to shut them down or to navigate and understand that at site 123, the back office POS has been, uh, camp, uh, the, the P, back office PC has been compromised and to shut it down and block it from infecting the rest of the network. When you think about cybersecurity, you know, we have a perfect storm that is developing, right? The business is becoming more and more digitally dependent. Customer experience, employee experience relies on this technology, on, on a digital, all this digital technology in order to just meet day-to-day -day operational needs. The threat surface is expanding dramatically. We're using IoT sensors, tank gauge monitors, uh, security video surveillance, 
everything is becoming uh, is another point of entry. It's the next coffee maker that becomes that uh, uh, jumping point to basically hack into a network. And the challenges here are are not insignificant. There are there's a decreasing supply of qualified cybersecurity uh, talent that's out there, and there's numerous compliance failures. And so, as I think about this, you know, it's it's not fair just to kind of show you all the problems. Um, this is there's a genuine desire here to kind of help, to try to make this a little bit easier, to try to uh, deal with this, issue, to elevate the posture, the cyber, the defense posture of the industry. And so my encouragement to you is to, to not ignore this. Don't turn away from these issues. They are quite challenging. They are quite daunting. My encouragement is to, like anything else in life, face it full front on. Look for help. Look for resources. There is an immense amount of uh, resources that are available to you uh, to, to navigate these waters. And I encourage you to, to learn more. Um, from a Hughes perspective, we've got a, a website set up. Uh, there's a whole portfolio of services uh, to tell you about in terms of how we try to simplify IT. But I would point you to a, our a website, hughes.com uh, forward slash retail hyphen petroleum. This is a good place where a lot of resources are kind of collected together. Um, and then finally, I would also uh, encourage you to reach out. I would be more than happy to have a, a conversation and be very interested in understanding and hearing your thoughts. You know, this is a very challenging time, and I am always interested in understanding how do we make this a little bit easier? There are serious threats that are facing the industry. And every time a breach happens, it becomes public news that hurts the store, hurts the brand and hurts the industry at whole. And I think together, we can work together to kind of elevate our defense postures, elevate our ability to protect ourselves and the industry at large. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to uh, uh, future opportunities to engage.